Hello, everybody, and welcome to HCAM Sports Talk Live. I'm your host, Tom Nappy. And joining us on the show today, we have Mike Tarosian, we got Kevin Stone, we got Andy Barron. Guys, how are you? Awesome. Doing good, right. guys. How are you? Doing good, Tom. How are you? As, uh, is the reason why Bob's not here today because he, he was a because uh, the Browns won last week? And, yes. Uh, he's probably yes. kicking. He's going to be kicking them. So I think we're all kicking them. He ourselves. is in deep regret about not <laughs> picking the Browns. Oh, my goodness. But who would have thought that the Steelers come out in the first round and choke yet again? Un- that was unbelievable what I watched. I mean, just think of it this way. The Browns had not won a road playoff game since 1968 or 69, excuse me which is just unfathomable to think. And they had to do it against their arch rival that has owned them for almost Older. 20 years. Older. This Steelers loss is very similar to how the Patriots season ended last year. They were 11-0. Right. They were talking about going undefeated, and they're gone. Unreal. They went, what, 1-4 in, in the last uh, yeah. five games? Yeah. Pretty unbelievable. The Steelers falling apart once again. And with all those teams that they've had just loaded with talent and all those times that they've just managed to choke in the playoffs year after year, it seems they're choking. You just wonder if uh, maybe Mike Tomlin should go. I'm I'm sure a lot of Steelers fans are thinking that right now. Well, the Steelers don't fire coaches. I mean, they, they never, they never do. Cower was there for years. Chuck Knoll was there for years. So no, probably not. Um, And who are you really going to replace him with? Really, I mean, I mean, I know he's not he's not the maybe the best coach, but compared to some others, but the Steelers don't fire coaches, so I I'm pretty sure uh, he's going to be back. back. Yeah, I'm sure he'll be back next year, so he can choke again. But um, I just remember when they lost to the Jaguars in what was it 2017, because they're already looking ahead to the Patriots. You know, I felt like it was pretty much the same situation in this game. They were probably just looking ahead to the Chiefs or whoever they were going to play next and thought the Browns would be a cakewalk, but it wasn't. And uh, that was some pretty bad football by the Steelers the other night. But we'll certainly get more into that in just a bit. But uh, I do have some reminders for everybody. The registration deadline is coming up for Hopkinton Little League Baseball and Softball. Sign up your young one for baseball or softball by January 31st. You can head over to HopkintonLittleLeague.org and click register now. And yes, we have more sports coming up on HCAM. And it starts Tuesday with boys basketball versus Westwood. But by the time you watch this show, that game would have already happened. <laughs> and we'll have boys hockey against Westwood, 5.40 p.m. Tonight, if you're watching the live version of this show. <laughs> so boys hockey versus Westwood, 5.40 p.m. Then Thursday, we'll have Alpine skiing at 6.15 p.m. And then on Friday, girls basketball versus Westwood, JV and varsity coverage. It'll start at 5 p.m. And we'll also have the freshman basketball games. We're picking up the stream of the freshman basketball games at 3.30. So you can catch that on our YouTube page and HCAM Ed as well. And then on Saturday, we'll have our first varsity girls hockey game against Medway, a 5.40 p.m. game for girls hockey. So there you have it. And yes, since we're so busy with uh, sports and hockey on Wednesdays, this show is pre-taped for all you watching. So we're not technically live, but we're live to tape. So any mistake, we don't edit it. We keep it. And with Mike here, there'll be a lot of mistakes. So There'll be tons. <laughs> well, except uh, four and six, was it, last weekend? Not too no, many went, mistakes. Actually, you did pretty good in the picks. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. All right. Just saying. <laughs> and and uh, we'll get into picks in just a bit, but let's recap last week's records. Why not? All right. So last week, we also picked the college championship, which there was only one person here that picked Ohio State. <laughs> and I'm was that sure... Bob? <laughs> no, it was Kevin. Kevin did. I, oh, Kevin picked Ohio State. Yeah. Kiss for the hell of it, too. <laughs> Uh, I'm sure you're you're regretting that decision though. Think, think Alabama you do to be team. different. <laughs> Alabama, well, I mean, that, yeah. that Bama team, they're an NFL team basically playing yeah. college kids. So yeah. um, yep. that was probably going to happen last night. 
Yeah, that was a rough one for Ohio State. Uh, Alabama, they are just relentless. Pretty unbelievable performance. Um, so I went five and two, and uh, one of the picks that I changed to be different worked out. I was originally going to pick Tennessee. I switched to Baltimore to change things up a little bit, and it worked out for me, so I'll take it. Uh, Bob went four and three. Uh, Jared went four and three. Andy went four and three. Kevin went three and four. And Mike went uh, five and two. Five and two. So, so there you have it. So Mike and I were tied for the uh, – I tell you, I wish I was around for the conversation because I bet I would have been swayed too to take Baltimore, which would have put me yeah. six and one. Well, you weren't, yeah. so. But it said so, yeah. <laughs> 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 Thanks. Thanks, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll have to get Bob's picks uh, later on. But also, uh, last week, we threw up our Super Bowl predictions on a graphic that was added. Ooh. We didn't really talk about that. So we'll get probably a little more into that today but why don't we start out with it uh we'll get right into the picks but uh, first off kevin you mentioned that you'll be heading uh to medway and millis girls basketball tonight and since they're tvl teams i'm very curious uh how's their season going so far uh is there any uh preview you can give us of that game tonight uh, short answer, no. I have no clue. Uh, but, <laughs> no, no I, uh, I do know, I believe uh, they're both one and one uh, I think they both kicked off, I want to say, maybe over the weekend, uh, something like that. But uh, I actually did Marlboro and Hudson yesterday, and that was my first time seeing uh, basketball in the, the 2021 COVID era. And, man, is it ah, weird. Uh, it you is know, weird, Teams, huh? teams they- getting dressed. You know, one team is warming up. The other team is getting dressed on the sideline. Uh, the benches are not side by side. They're completely across the court from each other. Uh, there was maybe, I think, four people in the gym besides the teams. Uh, so, man, it is it is very weird. And uh, I know I, I was just talking to you guys as well. Uh, I'll be doing the DS girls hockey game, uh, DS Hopkinton girls hockey game uh, tomorrow against Medway or well, Wednesday uh, against Medway. So I'm curious to see what that looks like as well. Um, in terms of Medway Millis, I'm not sure, uh, but just the, kind of the overall outlook uh, of what it looks like right now, uh, it's going to take some time getting used to. Uh, I think you guys can probably attest to that as well. Yeah, it's certainly a different situation, especially seeing the players having all their chairs in Hopkinton, at least that they have all the chairs separated and yeah. they're all distant. And of course, everybody's wearing the mask. Uh, but we got some pretty good basketball this past weekend, I must say. We had uh, some tremendous girls games um, against Norwood, and then we had boys games this past Sunday, some very close games, which you will see the highlights of available on our website very soon over at hcam.tv. But it was different, but it was great to see the kids out there and certainly fun to call some basketball again. Uh, how was the situation with Marlboro and Hudson as far as fans and stuff like that? Did they allow fans there? Nope. Uh, like I said, there was probably, I'm trying to think, top of my head, I think there was four other people in the gym. A um, couple ADs and uh, a couple people sanitizing the balls, and that's about it, man. It's, uh, I'm not sure how much you guys have done yet, but everything is, is hockey, basketball, whatever it is. It just looks so weird. Um, I know we had talked about it you know, the, the last couple of weeks leading up to it, but um, seeing it for the first time, uh, it was much different than the fall season. Uh, the fall season never really, it didn't look that different. At least to me, it didn't. Um, the actual game of field hockey might have, but sports in general didn't feel that different to me in the fall. The first couple Soccer of games. Was. Are, Soccer yeah, was. Yeah. It, just in terms of the first Probably. couple of games I've done in the winter, though, um, I think it's night and day, just the awkwardness. Uh, of it. So um, I know, like I said, I'll be doing hockey tomorrow. I'm very curious to see what that looks like. Um, Cause from my, exp- sure. from my experience, I don't think hockey looks that different. It, it was really, that's, that's what I figured. Yeah. I mean, the, I, the major difference is there's two 22 and a half minute halves rather than three periods. I'll take it. Which, which is 
and I think <laughs> better for us, but yeah. <laughs> maybe not from a coaching standpoint. I yeah. noticed there was more timeouts than usual called because of the long halves rather than yeah. the three periods, but game wise, it didn't look too different. You know, that they, they blew the whistle on a couple occasions when there was a group of players getting too close together, but it was rare that you saw those extra whistles in there. So I guess the good news is hockey looks pretty normal. I, I, I will say for basketball, the weirdest thing so far has been on the free throws when you only have three people, um, Trying to rebound, it's it's the most mind-boggling thing I've seen. Yeah. Um, yes, I, I don't know, I don't know how coaches are dealing with it. Uh, that the, the no tip off, um, just seeing a team randomly start, you know, with a ball is very, very awkward. But yeah. try, um, try you know, in terms of hockey, though, now I know tomorrow's game is at the uh, the Blackstone Rink. Have you guys worked there, and um, is it different there or anything like that? I haven't Jeez. broadcast it from Blackstone yet, have we? Okay. No, no, we, the Hopkins and girls, they now play at the New England Sports Center. Oh, look, I, I might now have to talk to my boss and see if that game is not where I was told it was. Yeah, um, no, the, everyone's at the but, sports uh, center, which made it nice for us for TV. But, uh, yes. you know, what's, so the, it's against Medway. So maybe Medway plays there. Um, I'm not sure. But um, actually, yeah, I think we got boys hockey tomorrow. So we won't be at the. Oh, game. yeah, we got boys. Yeah, yeah absolutely all up. The Providence um, Bruins are playing their home games this year there too up in uh, Marlboro because yeah. the Dunkin' Donuts Marlboro. Center is, is is unavailable. Yeah. So Kevin, that's yes, that's a Medway home game. So it is at Blackstone right. Valley. <laughs> Thank God. Uh, no, but you, you mentioned Providence. It's funny. I think we've all made that joke at least you know three or four times in our lifetime. You know, hey, let's go play in Hockey Town and in Saugus or something like that. And now the freaking Providence Bruins are playing in Marlboro. It's it's <laughs> wild. Uh, it's yeah, no fans, unfortunately, but I guess it's uh, pretty sweet to have the Providence Bruins in town. I, I really wish I could go uh, watch a game after one of our hockey games, but that probably won't happen. Yeah, no, but to, 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 real quick to your original point, things are definitely weird, um, but the kids, you can tell, they're just thrilled to be back out there. Um, the games might not look that good and um, teams might be, you know, a little rusty. They don't care. The coaches don't care um, from what I've talked to. They just want to be out there. And, you know, that's that's obviously the main thing. Absolutely. It's good to see them out there. Uh, but I think you'll uh, you'll find hockey not to be too different. That's what I, I, I think you'll uh, enjoy it. Um, but, yeah, it's great to have the kids out there playing some games. And we did just get some breaking news a little while ago. Uh, Ashland hasn't started their season yet, so that is going to force some changes in the Hopkinton schedule. So their games next week could be very limited, and we'll get you uh, up to date with uh, all the changes on our uh, website, hcam.tv. Yeah, Tom, I was at Tom, I was at Ashland High School yesterday morning, and uh, they were doing COVID testing for the entire school. And uh, talking to the uh, school superintendent, 60, six, zero known cases in the high school. Oh, All right. Wow. This is this is while the testing was going. They knew about 60, so the test of the rest of them. So, um, and, you know, he was hopeful that, you know, these tests would all come back and they could get that program started next week. But um, hearing the news and seeing this, uh, it doesn't look good. Yeah, it's very unfortunate. Uh, there are a couple of, Unfortunate situations in the TVL and a few schools such as Ashland, I believe Holliston, who uh, aren't playing right now. And we certainly wish they were because that's usually a it's always a great rivalry between Hopkinton and and Ashland and Hopkinton and Holliston. But uh, hopefully those schools will get some type of season in. Maybe they'll uh, play a couple of weeks. We'll have to wait and see. But we certainly hope the situation gets better in those TV old towns. All right. So why don't we take a look at the slate of playoff games and get into the picks. We got some doozies. Here's the slate. We got eight teams left. Uh, four in the AFC, four in the NFC. We got two Saturday games, two Sunday games. So let's uh, do some picks here. Our first game that we are going to have is the 10-6 and six Rams who stunned 
the Seahawks last week, taking on the 13 and three first seeded Packers. What do you guys uh, think about this game? I think it's going to be a good battle. The Rams, they somehow beat Seattle with an injured Jared Goff, and they initially started their backup who had a very unfortunate injury. Uh, We hope he's okay, but Goff came in, and they ran the ball a whole lot, and it ended up working out for them. Uh, But I think uh, the Packers will take this game. I think the Rams just uh, too beat up, but – Certainly a good effort last week uh, for the Rams against the Seahawks. Uh, Let's see. Who should we go with first? Mike, what do you think? Well, you know, I'm not worried about the health of the Rams, but uh, even if they were healthy, I I would still have to uh, go Packers uh, for this one. No no, doubt. They're going to carry on to one more round to um, to go on. I I, I think they're going to do it. All right. Kevin. Uh, solely because my partner at New England Football Journal, John Serenides, uh, is a Packers shareholder. I am going to take the Packers here. Uh, but if you're not worried about Aaron Donald and Jalen Ramsey, I don't care if they're hurt or not. Um, it's an issue. Uh, they right. are going to be, they're going to be in Green Bay's face. Uh, I can't imagine that's a high scoring game. Uh, Green Bay's defense isn't great, uh, but I, I just don't. I don't see how the Rams made that road trip after going to Seattle uh, and now having to go to Green Bay. I don't know if you can kind of make that quick turnaround. Uh, this is a closer game than people think, uh, but I, I got to take Green Bay here at home. Well, then the other issue is Aaron Donald got beat up last week. He came out of the game injured, so you wonder if he's going to be back. Uh, Andy, what do you think about uh, this Packers-Rams game? You really got to be impressed with the Rams, but they're, they're really just kind of Jekyll and Hyde. You know, one week they look great, and the next week they can't even beat the Jets. So, I mean, but Kevin's right on this. Aaron Donald and Jalen Ramsey are the entire key to that Rams defense. And if they can get in and frustrate Aaron Rodgers, that's a problem because he's all about timing, just kind of like Tom Brady is. But I, I agree. Going into Lambeau Field in January, it's probably going to be freezing cold up there. I can't. If the Packers can't get it done this week, then when are they going to get it done? But I think it is going to be a close game, but I am taking Green Bay. All right, and Green Bay's defense certainly took a big step up this year. In the 8-15 Saturday night game, we have the 11-5 Ravens and the 13-3 and Bills. And the Ravens, have they finally gotten to a place where they don't just uh, absolutely collapse in the playoffs? They may have just done that. That was an impressive win against Tennessee, and – as I said, initially, I was going to go with Tennessee, but I changed it to the Ravens. It'd be a little different since all of our picks were too similar. <laughs> but uh, I'm glad I did because it worked out. Uh, I always thought the last couple of years, the Ravens had the talent, but they just were not good in the playoffs. They would be one and done just about every single year. But now they get a tough Bills team. I think this game's going to be really close. And this is probably going to be – a game that goes down to the last seconds. I think it's going to be a back and forth high scoring battle. And I initially was going to pick the bills, but the more I think about it, I'm going to go with the Ravens in this one. I think they're going to beat the bills. Uh, Mike, what do you got? You know, um, I was, I was all for uh, uh, Buffalo. And I, I, you know, after last week's uh, uh, Titans loss, the momentum that the uh, Ravens are going to be carrying in. I'm, I'm going to go Ravens this time. All right, Kevin. Uh, I'm going to take Buffalo here, but uh, if you're Baltimore, first of all, let me just say, there's a college offense, and I'm not sure how they manage to keep doing what they're doing. Um, they're not a passing offense by any means. So with that in mind, if they can keep Buffalo's offense off the field, they can easily go in and win that game. Um but in terms of, you know, sentimental value and all that, how do you not pick Buffalo at this point? I mean, it's just a great story. Not to mention that 8, 5, or 8 o'clock, 8.15 kickoff. I don't care how many fans are there. It's going to sound like 80,000. Um, that is yeah. going to be a fired up fan base. So uh, I think this is the best game of the weekend, to be honest, even more so than Saints and Bucks, which I know we'll get to. Uh, low scoring game, I think. Uh, but I, I have to take Buffalo here. Pretty much just because it's in Buffalo. 
I think all the fans should bring their own tables they could jump through during <laughs> yeah. that Bills game. And, and I'll tell you what, to your point, I am rooting for the Bills to win this game because I'd much I think it's a great story and I'd much rather have them advance than Baltimore. <laughs> but I just feel like Lamar Jackson, Baltimore, they're red hot. They're, they're so coming on the at thing. the right time. That's the thing. If they can control the ground, they can easily win that game. Yep. But I think Buffalo's defense will be a little bit more challenging than Tennessee's. Yeah. Andy, what do you got? Well, honestly, I was not really impressed with Buffalo last week. I thought the Colts should have won. Because if they if they catch that fourth down touchdown pass, they win the game. Listen, they won, so I'll give them credit. But uh, and I and I honestly thought Tennessee awful, awful game plan and coaching in that game. They were terrible in that game. They took a big step back. But I'll give the Ravens credit. They won. I do like the Bills in this game, but I do think it is going to be close. Uh, I don't know. You just you just get that feeling the Bills are going to find a way to screw it up, and they almost <laughs> they almost did last week. You got to give the Colts credit. They played them very tough, and and John Harbaugh might see something on film that he likes. Um, but I do think the Bills win. But I but I do think it is going to be close. Man, you're talking like the Bills had a time span where they made four straight Super Bowls and lost. Oh wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just – no, I mean, they, they got the job done. But, I mean, it just – I thought they got exposed. Tight ends are going to be a huge factor in that game, especially with Mark Andrews on Baltimore. He is really physical and tough to bring down. That could be a factor going into that. That Bill's secondary is a little banged up too. Yeah, I mean, this is going to be yeah. an interesting game. This and is they lost Zach Moss. Big, right? big loss on yeah. offense. Right, yeah. Then they just – they added somebody – Trying to think of who it was to replace Zach Moss. I can't remember. Uh, it was a free agent. I'm having a mind blank. I'll try to look it up later in the show. But anyways, let's take a look at the Sunday games. We got the Browns and the Chiefs at 3:05. The 11:05 Browns, the Cinderella story Browns, who beat the Steelers last week against the first seeded 14 and two Chiefs. Then your 6:40 game <laughs> is Tom Brady. And the 11 and 5 Tampa Bay Buccaneers, well, technically 12 and 5 with the playoff win, against the uh, New Orleans Saints, who got a dominant win against the Chicago Bears this past week. They are 13 and 4 overall. So we'll pick the 305 game first the Browns and the Chiefs. I think the Browns are a great story. I'm glad they beat Pittsburgh, but I think that's where it stops. Kansas City, <laughs> I think, is going to take this game from the Browns, but I do think the Browns will keep it close, and I think it'll be a relatively high-scoring game. And defense is kind of a vulnerability in this game for the Chiefs, so if they could, uh, if the Browns somehow find a way to stop Mahomes on a couple of drives and they're able to – just put up touchdown after touchdown like they did against the Steelers. They give them a chance. I think it'll be close, but Chiefs take it. Mike, what do you got? Yeah, uh, it could it could be a close game. Uh, it also, could be high scoring, but I think uh, I don't think the Browns are going to shut down Mahomes at all. And uh, I'm not going to you know go pull a Bob and say, oh yeah, Mahomes is going to get a, a couple uh, records on this game. It's going to be a good game. Is it going to be as as good as the uh, game after? No, uh, which I'm expecting high things. And, of course, thinking about and keeping in mind my Super Bowl picks, which I'm still sticking with, I have to go Chiefs. All right. Kevin, what do you got? Uh, it's tough. I'm going to go Kansas City, uh, basically just because they're in Kansas City. But much like Baltimore, if Cleveland can run the ball with Chubb and Hunt and keep that offense off the field, I think they have a shot. Um, I, overall, though, I think Kansas City just has too much speed. I mean, Ben Roethlisberger, he looked like he's 400 pounds and, you know, 55 years old. He still threw for 500 yards on Cleveland. So uh, I'm not sure how they really stop them. But if they do and they can run the ball, I wouldn't be shocked if they win that game. But at this point, it's hard to go against Kansas City. Yeah, I think that might have been Ben Roethlisberger's last game. Uh, I'll be surprised Agreed. if he comes yeah, back sure. next year. Yeah. Uh, Andy, what do you got? Um, look, everything went right for the Cleveland Browns last week. Everything pretty much went their way. Kansas City is an entirely different animal. Patrick Mahomes is the best quarterback in the league. It's really not even close. And you're going into Kansas City. 
There is one factor though. Kareem Hunt's going to be out for this because he used to play with the Chiefs. They got rid of him. You don't you don't mean to tell me that that he's not going to be fired up for this game. And yeah, the Browns running game is very very good, no question. I just think the Chiefs are too good. I think they're too good. I will say though, if the Browns do somehow win this game, oh man, it's that would be awesome. Just, that I mean, that would just be incredible. But I am taking the Chiefs, and I I think they're going to win going away. I just think they have too much. All right. So real real quick. That over under, I'm looking at Bavada right now, is currently at 56. Wow. <laughs> uh, I would probably take the over. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe, I would maybe, take the over. Yeah. Maybe yeah. tease it down a little bit. <laughs> yeah. All right. In the uh, 640 game, we got the 11 and 5. Tom Brady led Tampa Bay Buccaneers against the New Orleans Saints. Uh, who are the second seed. This should be a good battle, but the first time these two teams met, it wasn't a good battle, and the Saints dominated. But I think the third time is a charm, and I'm going to go with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I think they'll uh, pull a situation similar to what uh, Baltimore did. Uh, Baltimore, they lost last year in the playoffs to Tennessee. They lost during the season. And then they beat them in the playoffs. So I, th- I think uh, the Bucs are going to take this one. This game's going to go right down to the last second. I'll be surprised if it's a blowout. And if New Orleans dominates again, well, I guess uh, shame on me. But I'm going with the upset here. Tampa Bay, I think, is going to take it. I got them winning the Super Bowl, so I got to stick with that. Uh, Mike, what do you got? Yeah, you know what? I, I have to do the same thing. I am sticking with them the whole time. It is going to be the battle of the quarterbacks. It is going to be um, – it should be a blowout. I mean, if it turns into an Alabama-Oklahoma, I mean, Ohio State game, you know, that's a – yeah. <laughs> I'll be shocked, but I don't think we're going to see that. I think it's going to go – it's going to be exciting through and through, and uh, Tom Brady will come up on top. I will say this, though. Tampa Bay was not impressive last week. Brady was, but the defense was pretty horrid. Um, The offense, it was very impressive in the first half, slowed down a little bit in the second half, but I'm not too worried about their offense. They just have so many threats. But I am worried about the Tampa Bay defense, and I'm worried about their special teams. And uh, they're not the most disciplined team in the league either. So a lot of penalties could certainly hurt them in this game. Because to beat the Saints team, you got to be almost perfect. So as long as uh, they're almost perfect on both sides of the ball, I think they can uh, get the W. Uh, Kevin, what do you think? Yeah, you said it perfectly, man. I'm going to go Tampa. And I had that way in the Super Bowl as well. And uh, if you guys have read, you know, our Tampa Bay Tuesday pieces every week, uh, I've been on board since week one. But, um, look, it's going to be a shootout, I think. Uh, It's in the Dome, the Dome. You know, just in general, no matter who is there, uh, it's a tough place to play. So um, I do like the fact that Brady is not outside for a playoff game. Uh, it's another kind of notch in his belt there. So I think it's a shootout. Uh, Tampa Bay's defense scares the crap out of me. They, I thought they were terrible uh, against Taylor Henke the other night. Heineke, however you say it. Heineke. Um, Heineke. It's, it's amazing that he was actually in the quarterback room in 2017. I had no clue. <laughs> um, I'm not sure anybody else did. Uh, I did. Look, it's like I said, I've been on board with, with Tampa Bay all year. This is not going to be easy, but if you can't root for the best athlete we've ever seen to have more success, as well as still be a Patriots fan, well, I can't help you. Uh, <laughs> this is a great, it's a great story, and uh, I, I really hope he keeps it going. All right. Uh, Andy, what do you got? I'm going to say that I was not impressed with Tampa last week. I thought the Washington football team frustrated Tom Brady a little bit. Now I know they, they, they won uh, Tampa Bay, but they exposed Tampa Bay a little bit. They were very physical with them at times. And you have to think that Sean Payton and his staff are going to get some of that tape. This is not a good matchup for Tampa Bay, but I do think they, they do get it done this weekend just because I still do not trust the saints. I personally wasn't really that impressed with them against Chicago. I think maybe they were just maybe playing good enough to win. Chicago is really just kind of back their way into the playoffs. But I do think Tampa Bay is going to win just because if I have to put money on Tom Brady or Drew Brees, I'm going with Tom Brady. I mean, right. just, but it's going to be close. This Saints team is is not a pushover, especially mm-hmm. in the Dome. But, I'll, but I am going to take Tampa Bay. I'm sure. Real quick, 
Sorry, right. real quick too. That offensive line for Tampa Bay the other night, yeah, it wasn't pretty at times, but Brady stayed pretty clean that whole game against arguably one of the the best defensive lines in the league. So mm-hmm. um, that was very encouraging as well. Yeah, it certainly was. Uh, but I, Andy, uh, you you brought up a good point. Washington did frustrate. You could uh, see it. Tampa Bay quite and a you, bit last And you week. could see Tom Brady. He was getting aggravated. This is what happens with him. When he gets frustrated, he starts pouting. He starts making faces. That That's not going to cut it against New Orleans because they know they know the Buccaneers very, very well. But just you have to be encouraged. If you are a Washington fan, you got to be encouraged. Oh, yeah. Because they should have been blown out in that game. But if you go back and you watch that, the second – meeting between these two teams this yeah. season yeah. You, you might want to change your pick because that was one of the worst performances <laughs> I've ever seen yeah. any offense but it's tough to beat a team three times right, right. that is a tough thing to do especially right. a team led by tom brady three times yes. so <laughs> let me ask you this real quick is this it for drew Brees? like if they lose this game oh yeah i think, I think it could be I, I think no matter what he's done win or lose yeah i mean this this might be it i mean even tom yeah. brady i mean we really don't know how much longer he can even play. I mean, he's, I mean, you just gotta you gotta start weighing that a little bit. Well, Brady you know? already said he's coming back next year. So, well, they're playing the Patriots. Of course, he's gonna come back. I was gonna say he better be. They're coming here next year. Oh my oh, god, yeah. that is that is gonna be just that's gonna be epic. <laughs> that will be epic. Who knows oh. who the Patriots are gonna have a quarterback next year, though? <laughs> that's no another idea. story. Oh, but, uh, coach, uh, hopefully, Jimmy G. <laughs> who? <laughs> who? <laughs> All right, so if you, if you had to pick a veteran that is coming to the Patriots, who do you think it is most likely to be? And do you think it'll be a veteran, or are they going to draft someone and go young? I have this bad feeling that they're going to draft someone and go young. I would like it to be a veteran. The guy I ultimately want is Deshaun Watson, but does he cost too much? Probably. Uh, but if Jimmy G's hanging around out there, how, cannot, how could Belichick not go scoop him up? That's Belichick's That's- boy. That's yeah. my pick, too, right now. I mean, he knows the system. You're not starting from scratch. Um, you can kind of build around him. And, um, again, not starting from scratch is, is probably the biggest factor. Um, they, they need to draft someone. I think we might have talked about this a couple of weeks ago. I want them to do what um, the Vikings did a few years ago. Well, excuse me, the Redskins did uh, when they drafted Cousins and RG3. Um, that's what I'd love to see them do. You go get two young guys, you get a veteran, and you're all set. Um, If they start young, I don't think Bill's going to want to do that simply because he's running out of time, too. Um, So You can't start young if you're him. So I'm with you. I think Jimmy G's the answer. Somebody made a a, uh, a buddy of mine told me this, and then they really got me thinking, sign and trade for Matt Ryan. I wouldn't mind Hmm. it. Because you know what? He still can play. He went to Boston College. I, I the guy's a good quarterback, and he mm-hmm. still has been around for a while. Tom, I think Deshaun Watson's probably too much money, but I really got thinking I would go with Matt Ryan, absolutely. But you got to get him somebody to throw the ball to too. You can't just oh, yeah. get him. Yeah, there's, there's more than just yeah. quarterback. Yeah, yeah, but I I I would take it. I would do it. Sure. Yeah. For yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever they do, they're gonna need weapons and. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that Cam Newton was the solution or that it would have been a substantially better season if he had a couple weapons, but it would have been better. I, I think uh, it was it really hurt Cam Newton the fact that Edelman was out. They didn't really have anybody reliable that you can go to all the time. And if you look at Cam Newton's career in Carolina, he's always had somebody reliable he can go to. You didn't have that on this year's Patriots team, and – no matter what your quarterback situation is, whether you're drafting or you're getting a Jimmy G or a Deshaun Watson, you're going to need weapons. I guess the uh, one quarterback that could make it work with what they have and probably still produce an okay result would be Deshaun Watson. But receivers, in my eyes, quarterback and receivers should be the main focus of the Patriots in this offseason. Yeah. And have, Hunter uh, Henry. Hunter Henry is my top option in free agency. And tight end, yeah. You need, you you need, need that tight end down the middle. Yeah, I wouldn't mind Hunter Henry. I, I think have, that would be a great pickup. Have Matt Ryan bring Julio Jones with him. Yes. <laughs> or Gage. Oh. <laughs> he was yeah. great. 
All right, let's take a look at our uh, Super Bowl picks. We showed this last show briefly, but we'll show it again. I got Tampa Bay, Kansas City, Tampa Bay winning. Jared Keen had Buffalo and Green Bay in the big game with Green Bay winning. Andy Barron, Kansas City and Green Bay with Kansas City winning. Kevin Stone, you had Tampa Bay and Buffalo with Tampa winning. Mike copied me and had Tampa Bay and Kansas City with Tampa winning. And Bob, Tampa Bay and Kansas City with Kansas City winning. So there it is, your Super Bowl picks. I think it should be interesting. At least um, no one got out early. Huh? At least no one got knocked out in the first week. Right, right. Yeah. Point. Here's another point. So, Buff, Kevin, I like your pick because Buffalo to the Super Bowl, and they still have to beat Tom Brady, somebody who I they have just <laughs> simply <laughs> cannot beat. If you're a okay. Buffalo fan, you're going to think, we have got to beat this guy again. I mean. That, that Super Bowl, the amount of storylines – that can come out of that. Oh, uh, just endless. incredible. Endless. <laughs> I think Buffalo would be dreading that game. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> and here's the other thing. Buffalo, first Super Bowl, they lost in Tampa Bay. Wow. I mean, this team wow. has – right, when Scott Norwood missed the kick, oh, you can't possibly have a better storyline than Tampa and Buffalo. There you go. That's going to be a story right there. Now it's going to happen. because <laughs> it, <laughs> It's in Tampa. Buffalo's oh. just supposed to have that bad luck. Although I will say the NFL really can't lose. Uh, I mean, NFC Championship, you could have Brady Rodgers. Um, you could have, you know, Mahomes and Brady in the Super Bowl. Really, every single matchup that they could have this year, they, they got to be happy about it, especially in a in a year where they're not going to have a full stadium. You could have Baltimore and Cleveland in the AFC title game. Yeah. I mean, you don't, you don't mean to tell me that when the Browns moved out of Cleveland – and they move to Baltimore, that still stings. I mean, again. Yeah, and how, how incredible would it be to have Tom Brady on his home field for the Super Bowl? It's never happened before. No home team's ever hosted. So, I mean, it's, it's bound to happen eventually. And if it's going to happen to anybody, can... it'll probably be Brady. <laughs> I, I might have to see if I can get credentials down in Tampa Bay. There you go. It, it's a <laughs> New England it, – it's a related to New England, so why not? Yeah, exactly. All right, so uh, one of the big rumors going around is the Patriots perhaps drafting Justin Fields from uh, Ohio State. He didn't impress me last night, but uh, I think he's a pretty talented guy. I wouldn't, if you're going to go young, I wouldn't be opposed to someone like Fields. Uh, do you guys think that's a possibility that the Patriots could either, because Rumor has it he could drop down to 15 or the Patriots could trade up a little bit to grab this guy. Do you think that's a possibility or do you think Belichick probably in his last year or two of his career wants to go with uh, a veteran to try to win another ring? Uh, you know, I think either one's a possibility, but I could also picture Belichick setting up McDaniels or whoever's going to take over as the next head coach with a young team. Hmm. Who's well, going first? Uh, I, I just like to say, you know, would I like to see someone like Justin Fields on the Patriots? Absolutely. Would I like to see a veteran here one or two seasons to work, work with them? Yeah, I'd like to see that too. To start off with that as Belichick's on his way out. I don't know how that would play with him. I don't know. I, I think you should try to get Jimmy G and Justin Fields. Yeah, if, all right. So, <laughs> so you get the Jays. Look at have the them Jays. battle it out. Yeah, in training battle the camp. Jays and have them battle. But I, I think, uh, I, I, I think Fields, you know, to start him off in New England with nobody to throw to, then I think that's trouble. Can we just trade and draft the whole team of the Crimson Tide? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I, I would, I would love Fields. To be honest, I was impressed with Mac Jones last night. Um, I, I was impressed with both of them pretty much the entire postseason, but uh, Mac Jones, he can make those shorter throws. Uh, and, you know, obviously he's throwing to Devontae Smith, but a lot of those throws last night were either over the middle or to the sideline. And that's pretty much the whole Patriots offense. Um, so I, I think he'd fit here, but I still want to go to veterans first, but I wouldn't mind either one of them coming here too. Now, Mac Jones is a junior. Do you think he's going to the draft after this year? Or do you think he's going to play it out? After the way last night went, I think he kind of has to go to the draft now. I think he should. I think he yeah. should. I, I think right now the stock on him is uh, right. very high. Uh, and he would 
he might have even worked his way up to getting drafted uh, before Fields would mm-hmm. with how yeah. good he looked. I mean, I, I want to go with a veteran, but, you, you know, if, 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 like, you, like we've been saying, it's quarterback and receivers. It's really where it starts from, and this is really what this team needs. We're really good in the running game, but, you know, again, if, if you're planning on going with what you have – right now then it's going to be another very very long season for the patriots it's time to go out you got to make that splash you got to get somebody in here that can start getting this team back on track because i don't think they really need that much it's just but clearly it, it's um that's the biggest need for this for this team right now but i think a veteran for a couple of years and then and if you do draft a guy like justin fields then okay well then he's probably will be your next guy because it's not going to be Jarrett stidham i can tell you that no, <laughs> I don't think it will be. I don't even know if he'll be on the team next year. I think he's been a major disappointment for Bill Belichick. I mean, the fact that they wouldn't even start him in that week 17 game. And it was a nice win to end the season. But the fact that they would not even start uh, Stidham with and instead started Cam Newton, who they knew before that game that they were getting rid of him. Uh I don't think there was doubt in any of their minds because Newton actually had a pretty good game, but they knew he was gone. So it makes me wonder if Stidham's gone because why would you, in a game that was meaningless, start somebody that you know is gone when you have somebody, uh, well, I guess a rookie, well, it's his second year, right? Uh, But you have somebody who really hasn't been tested yet. So I think uh, Stidham's just been a major disappointment. I don't think he's going to be even be on the team next year. I'm no. pretty surprised. No. The, the, the only problem I had this year, especially week 16 and 17, is Bill was clearly just starting Cam to see if he could go, you know, get another contract somewhere. And he, he felt like he owed it to him. Because um, later, which you have to be impressed with, but. Um, for a guy who said he did everything for the team and, you know, he always puts the team first, that clearly wasn't a case in the last two weeks. He was simply trying to give Cam a showcase. So um, that's annoying. I don't think Stidham's good. Uh, not that we saw anything, but um, we didn't get a chance to see it. And I think that's the most annoying part. Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, <laughs> the only times we saw him were those couple of games he came in where yeah. the Patriots were just getting massacred. But or, or when the Chargers had already quit. Right. You, you didn't get to see him from start to finish at all this season, which makes me think that they're done with this guy. Uh, one too many times they weren't impressed with him. They're done with him. It should be a very interesting offseason. I think this is going to be the most interesting Patriots offseason uh, that, that we've had in a very long time because – the future for the Patriots is just so unpredictable and no one knows what they're going to do. We, we could sit here all day saying they should get a veteran. They should do this. But in the end, I mean, Belichick is unpredictable when it comes to this stuff and no, no one has any idea uh, the way, the direction they're going to go. Well, we all know he's going to trade down and then take a defensive tackle, right? Yes. <laughs> and we all know there's going to be at least one or two Rutgers players. <laughs> but but that's about it so uh it should certainly be interesting uh to see what they will do in this offseason but i'll tell you what i hope i really hope that they are working towards getting a competitive team quickly because i really don't want this huge layover between brady leaving and this team being competitive again because when you look at that afc east division it's still pretty weak besides Buffalo. I mean, Miami took a step up this year, but I think they're investing way too much in Tua and they're probably going to ruin that team. But I still think it's a division that you can compete in if you put a halfway decent team on the field. No doubt about it. I mean, and the, and the Jets are still the Jets. Buffalo definitely is going to be good for the next at least five years. I mean, I think you can, we can all agree on that. So, no, like I said, this team is not that far off, but they, they have to make some moves. It is... Tom Brady's not coming back. He's gone. All right. You know, it's just, you got to make some moves. Let's go. I mean. The other thing too is if they keep that expanded wild card, which I hated originally, but I'll admit this weekend was awesome. 
um, having the three games. If they keep that, that puts you even closer to to at least being in contention every year. Sure, so absolutely, um, I, I definitely agree they're not far away. Yeah, and uh, do you think they're going to keep that seventh wild card? I, I have I, a feeling they're going to implement it in. It's another I think game they should. more revenue. I hated it, but it wasn't that bad. I have to admit. Three games Saturday, three on Sunday? Absolutely. Yeah, I'd keep that it. That was awesome. Oh, yeah. It, it was definitely great for an entertainment standpoint, but I'm sure uh, the teams that clinched that second seed that still had a play weren't too happy about it. Uh, but at least in the case of the Saints, you got the Bears, so it wasn't much of a game anyway. <laughs> Uh, but if it's funny because if you think about if it was like normal playoffs this year, uh, you don't have the Bears make it and you don't have what the Colts make it, so uh, the B- Buffalo would have had the bye week, I think, if yeah. I'm correct. So I'm sure uh, they're not liking it much, but the fans certainly are. It's just more playoff football. I think Kevin froze, or did I freeze? Oh, you froze for a sec. Yep, Kevin froze. Kevin is frozen in time. All right, so... Uh, yeah, you froze briefly. You there? <laughs> there he is. Were you saying something before you froze? I think so. Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. <laughs> no, you froze on me. <laughs> 2020, man, well, 2021. Who knows? Who knows? Love See, that's the thing, like... Sometimes uh, I don't know if I'm frozen or the other person's frozen or what. I can only imagine what's recording. This is very entertaining television right now. Sometimes I just sit there like this. (laughs) That's usually how you look anyway. Uh, So, Andy, how's everything going over at the uh, Sports Buzz? I understand you had some uh, awesome guests on recently. I believe you had the Medway hockey team on. Uh, How's everything going? Everything's going very well, Tom. And uh, we had uh, three of the boys, uh, captains from the Medway hockey team uh, on with us this Saturday. They were a great interview. Um, they just opened up their season. They're 2-0 now. This is a very, very talented hockey team. Um, you know, they're going for, I believe, their third straight TBL title. I mean, this is becoming a premier program in the conference as well in the state, even though there's no tournaments this year. But, uh, yeah, very, very talented team. So we, the, the buzz is going well. You can hear us every Saturdays, 11 to 1 p.m. on my FM 101.3. Still working on getting some guests in from this weekend. Uh, Milford will be playing Attleboro tonight um, in a home and a home and away. And then they'll play again on Thursday with Attleboro. Both the girls and boys are 0-2 right now. Tough start for Milford, uh, dropping to a very talented Franklin team to start the season. And, of course, the Franklin girls who have now won 20 seven straight games which is just that's beyond belief really i mean and Allie brigham is gone uh, right she's playing at george washington but they still have a juggernaut of a team and um what a, what a program they have over there to win that many games in a row at any level to me is just astonishing it was and a lot of fun following that franklin girls team oh, yeah. last year yeah. they and were impressive and the very fact impressive. that they're still doing it with Allie Brigham gone. That's even more impressive. I, you know, it, it's great that the kids are out there. It's great that we have a season, but I'm going to miss the playoffs because there's nothing like winter playoffs where, where you got uh, a lot of local basketball teams going in. And then, of course, hockey. And you mentioned Medway. Hopkinton Medway has been a great rivalry the oh, last yeah. years. Medway is in the TVL small, Hopkins in the TVL large, so they won't see each other this year, unfortunately. But that has been a great rivalry, and those have been two teams over the last couple of years that have very few losses. And any uh, losses that they had, it, there was typically one or two to each other because that series would just go back and forth. Uh, so Medway Hockey uh, continuing to just have an unbelievable program that is highly competitive on a year in year out basis. And Hopkinton, they have a very competitive team as well. Uh, They started off the season with a loss in Norwood or no, with a win in Norwood, excuse me. But then they uh, Norwood responded in a big way this past Saturday with an eight to one win over the Hillers. But uh, Hopkinton did lose a lot of seniors from last year. They are young. They have taken a step back. Uh, Of course you don't have Sean Walsh. who was, the key uh, goal scorer for Hopkinton last year, but they did have they did have some great players come back, and uh, I think they're going to be very competitive as the season goes on. Uh, but it's going to be interesting uh, 
in the TVL and Hockmock because you look at a situation like Franklin, Milford, or Hopkinton, and pretty much you're playing those teams that are in your division that <laughs> really uh, just give you a great game. And I think you're going to see a lot of good close games this year because of all the teams that are playing in their division against teams that they're used to and that they've built rivalries with the last few years. Uh, just look at Hopkinton basketball. They're going to see Westwood like four times this year. It's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah there's been also some other things, uh, you know, going on as well. I was reading an article uh, the other day about uh, – out near the Boston area, North Quincy and Quincy apparently have, have, have paused their hockey programs due to not following protocols. And the first thing that came to my mind was, I go, this is really just, this is what's going to happen when you're not following the rules, whether you agree with them or not, because we haven't really seen a lot of that happening. But it was just kind of disappointing to read that no masks. I mean, you know, trying to get in the locker rooms. I don't know. I just was like, that kind of irritated me a little bit because I'm like, you know, we're in a situation right now. If you're not going to follow those rules, you're not going to be able to play. Right. And, and it just, it just, that's what just kind of what I wanted to say was, is I just think our conferences and, and the, the teams in this area have really just done a great job of doing that because, um, but I guess that's just going to bound to happen somewhere, unfortunately. But, um, and I was reading an article just about how difficult it has been just with teams trying to, you know, come to the facility dressed and ready to go. Basketball is probably is a lot easier, but you know, you try hockey and with all that equipment that you have, that really has got to be, that's definitely going to be strange, uh, you know, as well. But, but so far, I mean, it, it uh, seems to be going very well in, in, in this, in this area, as far as teams go, hopefully it will stay that way. I know Michael was talking about Ashland and that's too bad, you know, unfortunately it's going on there, but. You know, and, and that's a good point too. Um, and by the way, we lost Kevin. So thanks for coming on, Kevin. But uh, teams that are following the rules, uh, there's certain teams that do follow the rules, that are following the rules, that are having problems. That's unfortunate. But when you have teams that aren't following the rules, that aren't properly socially distancing, that are, you know, have team members going to parties with, uh, you know, hundreds of kids or whatever, which has happened in a few instances, not locally really, but... Uh, there's been a few instances around the state of that. I don't feel bad for those teams. You did this to yourself. You right. know? I feel bad for Ashland because I don't think their situation is by their own co well, you know, they, causing. They, they it just happened. Huh? They also had a problem, too, in the report, if you read the uh, letter from the school superintendent, that uh, one student refused to uh, – uh, comply with the contact tracing and refused to give up the information. So he didn't say who he was with, where he was from, whatever. And so they closed the school down and that just set the wheels in motion. Yeah, that's unfortunate. And I'm sure uh, the athletes must not be too happy with that student. <laughs> no, definitely not. And, and listen, I'm not trying to like, you know, play favoritism or whatnot, but it's really simple. Like Tom was just saying, you know, you, whether or not you like it or not, you've got to follow the rules. Right. You got to wear a mask. You have the distance. Whether or not we agree with it or not, we got to put that aside okay. because you're right. I mean, it, it could just take one person to, to ruin it for everybody. I mean, look what happened in, you know, in, this, in Franklin over the fall when they were going through some problems there as well. You know, and, and it just, um, you just figured by now people would, would stop doing stuff like that. But unfortunately, it just. I yeah, know. you know, and it's very nerve wracking because it's like, you know, the virus situation's bad right now, and you're just waiting for the pin to drop to just cancel the whole thing. You don't want that to happen. No. So right. uh, it's my hope that all the athletes out there will uh, stay responsible. And stay responsible. Uh, so we don't have, have to have a situation where things get canceled. Well, we're going to be doing it for the rest of the year. So that's not changing. Yeah. So, I mean, you're going to, we're going to have to get used to it. You know? We certainly will. Um, and it took a lot of getting used to at the New England Sports Center this past <laughs> week, just walking through the locker room area. And obviously the locker rooms aren't available. So you got the players getting their skates on and equipment in the hallway. Uh, so that was a little bit interesting. And um, it was good to see some fans able to go. Obviously, Hopkinton, they have limited fans, pretty much two lanyards per player. Um but the local coverage right now, it's big, and we're glad to okay. be able to provide you with some of the Hiller sports games. And by the way, we'll likely be adding more. We'll have 
we'll keep you updated on that as well. Uh, so that is just about going to do it. We are just about out of time for this edition of HCAM Sports Talk Live. So, Mike, Andy, any last thoughts before we wrap the show up? All, all I can say is stay safe, keep vigilant. We'll be back to normal. And some great news that I just saw. Commissioner of Major League Baseball, preseason starts on time. Ooh. Full season of baseball. Okay. All right. All right. Good. So things are getting better. There is that light at the end of the tunnel. We are going to have a baseball season for the commissioner. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. It was... Hey, that was today's news. Don't stop on my uh, parade here. Come on. <laughs> That's good news. Good news. Great news, right? Finally. Yeah. But unfortunately, you look in the other window. What's going on with the NBA? Because they are really having some problems. And the NHL is scheduled to start this week. But I have a good feeling the NHL is going to – they have been really, really good. But what is wrong with the NBA? There is something not right there. The Celtics are having all kinds of problems. They're not playing for the rest of the week. There's no way they're going to play. Yeah, you you just wonder if they have to go back into a bubble. (laughs) Oh. Just put them all in the bubble until uh, baseball season's over. How's that, sir? Yeah, well – I think I think if uh, things keep up in the NBA, we could have some uh, big problems down the line. But at least in the NBA, you could kind of extend the season. <laughs> I mean, you don't have a lot of limitations in just extending it. You're seeing the problems is they don't have enough players available. That's where the problem happens because then when you get the contract tracing in, the NFL is a little bit different because your rosters are big. You don't have that luxury in the NBA. No. They'll have to utilize the uh, developmental league and call some of those guys up. <laughs> they might have to. The way it's the, the main red claws, I don't even know if they're playing. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Know. You'd hope they are because they, they might be needed in the NBA. So they might be calling some of those guys up. But in any case, we are out of time. Andy, Mike, thanks so much for joining me. This has been HCAM Sports Talk Live. Don't forget to... Uh, Check out our website, hcam.tv, for the latest news on upcoming Hopkinton Hillers broadcasts. And we have many sports coming your way the next few days, so it's going to be a whole lot of fun. And, of course, all the games will air on our HCAM Ed channel for the most part, unless there's a conflict with the government meeting. And our YouTube page, youtube.com slash hcamtv. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Take care, be safe, and we'll talk to you again soon.